Hello, greetings. Uh, I'm really, really tired, but like I was thinking of my religion, Shia Islam. I read about various uh, criticism on Prophet Muhammad on Wikipedia. This might not turn out very good. Uh, and I cannot wait because I might not be able to come here again and read. Uh, maybe after a break or maybe, I don't know, maybe I can come back to Allama Majlisi's Hayat al -Kulub. This is just one example of uh, my doubts, how they crept in. As I used to wonder, why send one prophet you know, to um, guide the people, show the truth, and only one prophet at a time. Why would God do this? And I couldn't find an answer to that, uh, a proper, complete answer. And even here, as I read Alama Majlisi's in his Hayat al -Kulub, narrations given, given by Imams, reliable, he says, from reliable traditions. Uh, I fail to understand. Here, Imam Jafri Sadiq, for example, explains. Uh, so I'll be going through this as I just read through it. And then I realize, yeah, like my turning points from Shia Islam having doubts. And uh, since I've read the Quran, I had some of them didn't make sense to me. Like Surah Azab, 37, Surah Noor, uh, the way it is written, it shouldn't be written like that. Ayah 33, they, there should have been a different, um, if there are so many punishments, right, uh, for uh, robbery and stealing and all this. Hard punishments like cutting off hands and other things. Um, like for zina. So why wouldn't there be a punishment mentioned there uh, separately about forced prostitution? Uh, so these kind of things. Uh, the Quran now, I've explained most of it, that I felt problematic. Um, you know, I felt the verses were problematic. And uh, now coming to this, for example, doesn't doesn't sit well with it. and with the reasons neither does Christianity or any Abrahamic religion which has a prophet whose books can be tempered and like we have uh, we have to really you know go through a lot of research and all this to find out as Shias also we have to go to Qom Najaf do a lot of research so the books that have been tempered with, as we are told, religious books, uh, we cannot, why should it be like this? Like, uh, And then we have to go through a lot of uh, research to find out if this was a true prophet or not. So just imagine being with Prophet Muhammad, you know, at his time and not being able to find out, even though miracles as we, uh, that they say that Prophet Muhammad brought about miracles and all that. Um, and uh, the best miracle is the Quran. Uh, however, those miracles of that time should remain for that time. Uh, the only thing that remains are these religious texts of uh, which are very little evidence is given and you know evidence can be found from them or the Quran really is not a perfect miracle uh, so we uh, uh, like we say that only the pure can touch it and all this and things uh, I've mentioned on my live stream Facebook uh, just recently, last night and yesterday, 
um, you know, things wrong in detail I've mentioned as far as I could and my health could allow me. Uh, so I'll try to take a shortcut. Sorry, I can't be uh, go into details and all this at this moment. But I just want for the record to keep this as I've come across this and my health went uh, really down. I, I, I really cannot keep reading this all the time. So uh, Imam was asked like, why was, um, uh, let me just read this from the aims of sending the prophets uh, chapter from Hayatul Kulu by Allama Majlisi, their miracles. Uh, so this chapter, aim of sending the prophets their miracles. It is narrated through a reliable chain of narrators that an atheist came to Imam Jafar Sadiq and presented a few cure queries. One of his questions concerned the logic behind sending of prophets. The Imam said, when we have agreed that we have a maker and creator, maker and creator, who is higher than his creatures and absolutely free from the fact that his creatures can see him, touch him or converse with him. We understand that the maker is wise. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. He only does which is beneficial to his creatures. Then it is necessary to send prophets and messengers who would communicate his laws to the people. They would guide the people in the affairs that are beneficial and prevent them from those that cause everlasting perdition. Consequently, it is evident that there must be a particular group which would convey his message to the people. They are the chosen ones of Allah and his prophets. They are wise and intelligent. The Almighty has bestowed them with wisdom and knowledge, appointed them as his messengers. So we need to recognize the messengers. So then comes the question here. I've read this now, uh, this part, and now uh, um, the circumstances and characteristics were quite different from those of the common people. Though in their creation and method, they are like ordinary human beings. So continuing reading, let me see if I, <coughs> I found something, uh, but uh, maybe like it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, okay, continue reading. However, they are sent by Allah, the wise and the omniscient, with knowledge, wisdom, arguments, proofs, knowledge, wisdom, arguments, proofs, witnesses, and miracles, so that they may prove the veracity of their claims, like raising of the dead and curing of the blind and lepers, etc. They accomplished some tasks that were impossible for ordinary people. So you can see how Islam has spread and how far and how many Muslims there are. That's true. Uh, the same practice continued in every age and the earth has never been devoid of the divine proof. Hujja. Hujja in brackets, close back brackets. <coughs> Excuse me. Who is the bearer of knowledge? and has a miracle to prove the authenticity of his claims, and he verifies the message of the preceding prophet. Imam Jafar Sadiq says in a reliable tradition, the Almighty with his luminous essence and divine attributes was concealed from his creatures. Therefore, he sent the prophets to give glad tidings of salvation and to warn against his punishment so that those who perish 
in disobedience must perish with the realization of their error and all arguments must be exhausted for them. All arguments must be exhausted for them, but I have questions and my argu my, uh, the questions have not been exhausted. Right, if that's what it means here. Similarly, those who achieve salvation must do so with knowledge, faith and proof. So this is all we have, knowledge, faith and proof. Because here Imam Jafar Sadiq says, and these messengers, people may learn about their Lord, what they did not know. They must recognize Allah as their cherisher. Okay, here we are told, so there's an ayat in the Quran. So if you want to remind us, you know, where, where God tells us that, am I not your Lord? And we all said, in that prenatal soul state, when we were one soul, so from the loins of Adam, in the loins of Adam, uh, uh, God said, am I not your Lord? So I wondered, you know, like, uh, has Imam Ali said, like, what is the matter with you people that uh, the year after does not even come in your imagination? That's a saying of uh, Imam Ali that I think I found in Dawn, not Najil Balagha, but in that uh, Pakistan's newspaper when I was living in Karachi, Pakistan. So these two all every day have these sayings of Imam Ali in the newspaper and they used to give that. Right? Uh, what is the matter with you? Is that uh, the hereafter does not even reach your imagination. Something to this effect. Sorry, I don't have word by word, uh, but uh, I can just, I know this much it, uh, imagination and so I'm trying to remember, and my memory is really bad. Uh, but uh, I think Imam, yeah, Imam, it's Imam Ali saying something to this effect. I'm not saying it ver verbatim. Okay, now this uh, could be like uh, you could leave me here saying that you don't remember and you haven't searched for it. Um, but um, then. Um, Right here, what I've got in my hands is Hayatul Kulub, but it's online, right? From al islam.org. So, if you would like to listen to my doubts, where they come from, um, you can join me and uh, be with me here. Persevere. Thank you so much. So, continuing. Imam Jafar Sadiq says in a reliable tradition, the Almighty with his luminous essence and divine attributes was concealed from his creatures. Therefore he sent the prophets to give glad tidings of salvation and to warn against his punishment. So that those who perish in disobedience must perish with the realization of their error and all arguments must be exhausted for them. Similarly, those who achieve salvation must do so with knowledge, faith, and proof, and they may achieve an everlasting life so that people may learn about their Lord what they did not know. They must recognize Allah as their cherisher, and they confess to His oneness. So it is a reminder that's true that we must uh, in ourselves find out but they have to show us, right? Where they have failed to show us that uh, this one God who created us exists. The Imams have failed. Another reliable, uh, so with that ayat like, am I not your Lord? Um, 
yes a messenger should come and remind us uh, and so this oneness of Allah the moment we believe in the oneness of Allah things should uh, be easy for us like to go on with uh, our lives without errors without uh, you know doing any bad harming ourselves and others but very in a wise manner live our lives blessed be graced by the grace of God okay continuing similarly those who achieve salvation must do so with knowledge faith oh sorry I'm just I think I kept going up uh, this is what I've done the second time uh, last time when I read it so another reliable sorry about that another reliable report mentions that Fadl Ibn Shadan asked Jafar as Sadiq when when it is when it is obligatory for people to obey the prophets why are they also required to recognize them very good question and to confess to their truth Imam replied this is because the creatures did not have the ability to understand their wisdom fully this is the reply is not good sorry to say this their creator was much higher that he could be perceived by sight the inability to understand his divine essence was apparent inability to understand now here is where the trap where I don't get my answer because in the Quran ayat like I mentioned before it says you should uh, do am I not your Lord so they should be pointing to that Lord right and um, uh, here Imam says that we have our inability to understand his divine essence was apparent there was no choice except to appoint prophets as links between people and Allah this infallible prophet quite an infallible prophet he even feels from the Quran ayat of John that he fails to be an infallible prophet Surah Azab verse 37 making a mistake Surah Azab verse 5 I think uh, unintentional mistake uh, Surah Tahrim verse where he breaks an oath uh, I know it's not obligatory but still it doesn't stand to reason that he should make oaths to his wife pleasing his wife to break them he's such a infallible prophet right so no he should not be allowed to do that an infallible prophet will never do such a thing can okay so continuing this infallible prophet conveyed the divine commands and prohibitions to the people it's very very difficult to recognize and him let alone God dancing okay I'll continue he also had to keep the people firm on some affairs whereby they could obtain the benefits and be safe from the perils because the people cannot decide by their own intellects what is beneficial for them and what is harmful see intellect fails there in Al Kafi, we are told Al Kafi Al Kulaini that intellect is the best. God asked intellect to come, it came. You know, and when He asked it to go back, it went back. So, only, or maybe, I don't know, see, maybe wisdom, but it says intellect. Here, Imams, Imam Jafri Sadiq says, because the people cannot decide by their own intellects which is limited uh, they can see those spiritual truths that's true so only reason and the brain and the mind and aql or intellect is not enough 
what is beneficial for them and what is harmful we have a so this is i have my doubts and i'm telling you as i'm reading through this a uh, hayat al qulub volume 1 and this chapter and the mom saying so i'm examining and i'm doubting because it doesn't really stand to my reason my intellect on one hand if you know how the intellect like intellect is limited so then we need spirituality we need god's help to understand and obey god so it's a leap it's a big jump like it's a hodgepodge i really cannot understand this anyways i'll just carry on reading if the obedience and recognition of prophets had not been incumbent on people the sending of prophets would have been a useless venture of course and the wise one who had created everything with untold benefits is pure from such vain acts god knows uh, related through reliable chains of narrators is the report where abu basir asked jafar sadiq the reason why allah has bestowed miracles on the prophets and imams the imam replied so that the veracity of the claims is established because miracles are from allah they can also be through uh, for, from devils false prophets magic sorcery okay the almighty he gives them okay the, because miracles are from allah the almighty he gives them to his prophets messengers and proofs so that the truth of the truthful ones and the lie of the liars are proved haven't seen much proof really another hadith mentions that Hussein al sahaf asked the same imam whether it was possible for allah that he changes the heart of a believer from faith to disbelief even after the belief of this person has been authenticated imam replied the almighty is just <coughs> so those quran ayats where we say for example my own now uh, understanding is that uh, you know allah wills or by the permission of allah they disbelieve or things like that are really he, imam is explaining that allah is just so it's not because allah didn't want you to be a believer that you're not a believer so it further explains he sent the prophet so that they may invite the people towards faith no this is like almighty is just so uh, here it's explained uh, that uh, he can uh, after belief has been professed and uh, it's an authentic belief by a person then uh, it's a uh, god cannot change that Okay, so and neither does he by his will uh, allow people you know to go into disbelief but allah has chosen allah uh, has given free will sorry allah has given free will so it's your choice your choice not allah's allah has given free will you can choose to be but that quran ayat the way it is written i don't know why a people take it in the wrong way i guess imam reply i have no problems with those verses because i can understand yeah allah is just and because he has given people free will and the quran ayats uh, i haven't much like uh, some ex muslims they have given uh, sorry about this but i don't agree to the way they say it right that allah willed that i go that i don't believe in all this uh so i don't believe in that 
Imam replied, The Almighty is just. He sent the prophets so that they may invite the people towards faith. Allah never calls anyone towards disbelief. Yeah, this is further explained. Sorry. Corrected. Then the questioner asked if Allah changes the heart of a confirmed disbeliever from disbelief to belief. The Imam said, Allah has created everyone with the capacity to believe. So, to believe in what? The miracle, the messenger, through the intellect, through what? Through miracles, without so it's not ex clarified properly, like, but uh, some Shias would say that this is parable. Im no, Imam has to make it very, very clear. He has to use simple language to explain to us. Sincere people who want to, who are, you know, who want evidence <coughs> and be completely sat satisfied perfectly. Holy, absolutely. But I'm not. The Imam said, Allah has created every one with the capacity to believe. So why couldn't Allah Himself put this in our hearts? And yes, He can send a prophet or some messenger uh, just to remind us, and then everything is well, everything is great. But these. Uh, like, really, you know, go after the disbelievers, kill them, find them. That's really, I mean, but there's something wrong here, sorry. Maybe the philosophical and the logic is missing here. I think the questioner has been asking Imam because, you know, to explain those verses in the Quran, which say that Allah willed it. I mean, by Allah's permission, you went into disbelief. So things like that, uh, the Quran is. The Imam said, Allah has created everyone with the, a capacity to believe. Now here is, I've just, I stopped here somewhere. They are like a blank, they are like a blank tablet, neither having faith in any Sharia code of religious law, nor disbelieving in it. Allah sent the prophets to them so that they may guide them towards Allah. And in this way, argument could be exhausted for the people. See, argument has to be exhausted, that's right, for the people. Thus, some people receive guidance, faith, by Allah's tawfi guidance, Allah's uh, grace and guidance, hidayat, tawfi, yeah. And some do not achieve guidance. So I've read up till here, and then comes Imam al rida or Imam Ali al Naki, why Allah sent Musa. Now I don't need to, and Isa and then all the prophets. So, the successors came, one after the other, at all times, uh, one at a time, prophets and messengers. <clears throat> so, I just had a problem with what I read up till here, and shared with you, and uh, so, now I'm exhausted and uh, it just didn't. You know, for example, to believe in the Prophet and then he can guide us. But since all arguments are not exhausted, so I still have questions. and So no Hindu religion or Hindu way no Christian, no Jews, no Abrahamic religion satisfied my quench for that uh, supreme reality, creator, whoever we may call it. 
and reading these books, my Shia religious books, and then going through some of uh, with the gurus <coughs> online about uh, the dharma, the sanatan dharma, and all this. Uh, it I feel it's really unfair for people, and it didn't really sit well with me. God, I thought, if there is a God, he must have a very good reason to do this, to, the, you know, make his people, and then say, no one recognizes me because they don't have the capacity, except for the chosen ones. See, on one hand, I hope I'm not uh, deceiving or uh, misguiding, or creating doubts in your hearts now is sharing and then you can read this yourself <coughs> Hayatul Kulu volume 1 and this is from the contents aim of sending the prophets their miracles I think this is the first chapter the aim infallibility of the prophets and imams is after the translators preface so this must be, this is the first chapter. And I got stuck, I mean, I, like I said, uh, some of the reasons here I gave, why uh, even the Shia Imams have failed to, you know, give me that full answer. Because on one hand, our intellect is limited. Uh, so we going slow on this I just wanted to briefly touch on this but then hopefully remembering this it, it's very painful to come back to this and see that uh, but let's see maybe the pain as I uh, the pain is leaving me as I'm sharing so I'm very grateful um, for this uh, I'll be sharing this video and it'll be there for you to have a look at and not decide by just listening to me but do your own research go to Hayatul Kulub and read the same chapter the first one after the preface aim of sending the prophets the miracles so briefly like disorderly as a uh, you know, lay, uh, not a professional way, but just uh, not even prepared for this. So as I found it, I have come here, I gathered a mustard strength to talk and uh, keep it for the record. So if someone wanted to know why I left Shia Islam, first of all, doubts like these crept in with Imam sayings, like my logic, it wasn't quite giving me that full, fully, ex you know, exhausting me. My answers giving me f proper answers. There's some logical fallacy here. And like they've jumped to things. And it's not step by step. Like when you read the Quran, I mean, this goes well. Imam has explained why God, I guess, in Allah, uh, he, he may be trying to explain. <coughs> but he have, they haven't even said this. This is what I'm trying to say. Like, you know, the atheists, ex-Muslims, some of them say, that why did Allah, Allah is saying these Quran ayats? It means this. What does it mean? That Allah wanted us to be in disbelief. It was his will, by his permission. So Imam corrects us on that. Quran ayats. Uh, right? So this is, uh, but that, okay, that I don't have a problem with. The problem I have is with, like, what Imam says about, uh, uh, this intellect being limited so uh, the spiritual way 
was to bring proofs through witness, sign, miracles, and uh, reason, exhausting every like miracle, because it has to go beyond the intellect. How do you take a person beyond the intellect? By miracles. But then we say <clears throat> that <clears throat> reason was the best. <clears throat> so you have to <clears throat> so you have to exhaust reasoning to go and then explain to us the spiritual things, the things which are metaphysical. And I feel they have failed. Even the Shia Imams have failed. I also think they have failed, because it doesn't fall logically. When we have agreed that we have a Maker and Creator, how can we agree that we have a Maker, an Atheist? We need proof of this Maker and Creator. So when in the Qur'an the ayat is, you know, it is a reminder. How come, so, when Imam Ali says, how come that even the hereafter it doesn't come in your imagination? Because the imagination even is not enough. It must be a reality that we need to see and we need to be shown. Like, for example, now Moji Baba, Moji Ji is doing to show us that this is the witness. This is uh, your true self. People have been, some uh, religious people, Christians would get up and say, you're do, uh, you know, not even like Muslims, but Christians would say you're blaspheming. Uh, but this is not the, uh, like, okay, blaspheming, but he's reminding you of the truth inside yourself. And this Quran ayat, which is, uh, before, when we were in the loins of Adam, all from uh, that time till, like, you know, all humankind, we have bore witness at some stage in that soul or loins of Adam stage. We are told in the Quran that God asked us, Am I not your Lord? So I wish Imam had explained in more detail about this and shown us and reminded, like shown us, like Muji Baba just tears, tears apart the, all the veils, seven veils that God is uh, hidden. Oh, so in seven veils God is hidden. So Muji Baba tears apart, that, apart those seven veils. Now, the Imam said, when we have agreed, agreeing, how have we agreed that we have a maker and creator? So that is not given here, who is higher than his creatures and absolutely free from the fact that his creatures can see him, touch him, or converse, talk with him. <clears throat> the word here used in this book is converse, in Imam's uh, translation of what Imam has said. Converse with him. We understand that the Maker is wise. We don't. Maybe by looking at the signs and all. <clears throat> but the scientists have still not got proof of this God. So it was quite, um, it wasn't, uh, we have to, I have to go into detail on this. It wasn't, <coughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. <coughs> um, proofs and all. Scientifically, we can't find God. So Imam should have explained this, that uh, there will be these scientists and proofs that uh, they will do a lot of things, but they will not be able to give you the evidence of God. Why? Because the way Muji Baba explains, thank God I'm able to say this properly. Because as Muji Baba tells us in his videos, you can check 
YouTube that uh, or for example uh, he goes into detail and he is showing us now uh, like in Dua'i Mashlul it is written none knows where he is in what respect he is or where he is how he is but he something like this in Dua'i Mashlul there's a part in the supplication of the lame man uh, this is a Shia Dua given to us by Imam Ali and then I think Imam Hussain and it was uh, Hazrat Khizr also involved in this dua, the green man, which is mentioned in Surah Kaf, ayat with Hazrat Musa. Uh -huh. So the man with the, this knowledge of God that is higher than Hazrat Musa's knowledge, Hazrat Musa meets. Now Hazrat Musa is supposed to be a prophet, and I don't know why he meets this uh, someone who is higher than him. So then they say this is Ali or this is, uh, I don't understand. Uh, I try to understand, uh, but I think the failure has been there to make us understand who was Khizr and why was he above the prophet of his time. And then God sent this man who would then teach Hazrat Musa certain things. I have no idea. Like if we say now that let's say the green man comes and he's, uh, you know, he's greater than Prophet Muhammad and that he had to teach certain things to Prophet Muhammad too in his time. People will be like, uh, Muslims would come to kill us. Uh, they couldn't take Ahmad Mirza of the Ahmadi, that he was uh, this very enlightened person, very like God uh, had uh, Ilm al Laduni, the sacred knowledge from God, that even the prophets were not, they didn't have it. I don't know. Uh, so these, uh, anyhow, I can't give all my questions and my doubts because. I'm not good at articulating, but I'm trying with broken English and, you know, not in a professional manner uh, to just give you the gist of how doubts have crept in about the Quran and the Imams, how they crept in. It didn't quite fit with my logic also. And spiritually also, I wanted to know. And uh, uh, there was no one to explain to me from the Shia side, until I met, until I read, I bought Jiddu Krishnamurti books in Karachi in year 2000 somewhere, and I read them, most of them that I could buy. I saved money and all this buying them, and read them. Because at that time, internet was not that much, it was limited, so, and we, I don't think we had that great search engine where now everything is available so easily. So I read those books and Jiddu Krishnamurti made sense. Uh, so, but not these uh, punishments and, you know, then hurting people and going to kill people just because someone said something about Prophet Muhammad. They didn't like because it's not, you know, so, uh, like what they believe in, to honor him and never criticize him or examine his life. Even though you can find discrepancies in the Quran ayats, like I did. So I've shared them. So maybe, you know, they can kill me because it is such a thing to believe in Prophet Muhammad. If you don't believe in Prophet Muhammad, you can be, and if you want to leave this Islam, even as a Shia Muslim, uh, you can be killed. And uh, so that's the thing, capital punishment, death penalty. Killed meaning death penalty. 
Uh, so, uh, something here, another point maybe. Let me see. So it's the presented queries. The mom said when we have agreed that we have a maker and creator. Agreed. With proof. Who is higher than his creatures and absolutely free from the fact that his creatures can see him, touch him, or converse with him. Huh. So if you agree that uh, there is a maker without proof, can you agree? Can an atheist agree without proof? But if you agree, then we can go ahead and say, if you don't agree, you feel so Imam tried to explain and uh, there's something wrong here anyway so I cannot go on right now I'll uh, take a break and then continue later consequently it is evident that there must be a particular group which would convey his message to the people they are the chosen ones of Allah and his prophets they are wise and intelligent the Almighty has bestowed them with wisdom and knowledge and appointed them as his messengers. So it just doesn't make sense. And now I'm losing it. Like I'm just in a going in a trance. I think I'm very tired. I can I won't be able to do do justice to my questions. Like so what I'll do is I'll I'll have to come back to this and continue where I left off here, upload this video and then come back later. Thank you so much.